It's broadcasting. Kind of spontaneous. Oh, I got some folks hopping in. There we go. Hello. This was kind of a random thing that happened, so why not? Hi, guys. Wow, there's a lot of, a lot of hayas. Hi. From Belgium, too. Nice. Yes, I'm wearing the same clothes from last night. It's been, uh, it's been one of those days. I think I got to bed at 3.30 a.m. ish. But, anyway. Not hungover. We didn't, we didn't, like, drink drink. We just had, like, a drink. And walked to Bob's Big Boy and had shakes and ate food you shouldn't eat at 2.30 a.m. And woke up feeling really kind of bleh. But it's fine. And don't apologize for not seeing the episode. Civil War is a very, very strong draw. Not a strong jaw. Hmm. That was kind of fun. Anyway, this is kind of a spontaneous thing. I'm doing a bit here before I go ahead and do more work with Marisha's dad on our room. Um, but uh, I'm glad you guys liked last night. That was interesting. Um, I guess uh, part of this brief periscope is... is Oh, I'm sorry you're upset that I cut my hair, but I have to, because it'll just keep getting longer and it gets ridiculous. It'll grow back, which is nice, and uh, it has to go shorter before it can get longer again, so. Sorry, the mane will return, I'm sure, in time. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll start with saying that, uh, man, uh, last night was crazy, uh, Major props to to the players for actually pulling out some tactics there in a circumstance that was pretty rough. Uh, I wasn't sure how that was going to play out. And a lot of circumstances, a lot of really lucky circumstances, very good roles on key moments really made a difference there. Um, it's interestingly frustrating at times because when things happen too perfectly on a televised or you know a, a live stream like that, when certain roles go so good, it's almost like man, no one's going to believe this. But, like, no one's going to fudge the rolls. Everyone's policing each other's die rolls. And, like, it's just incredible. Um, it was ridiculous. Um, I think kind of Grog's arc of coming under the understanding that his strength came from his friends and not from himself was kind of cool. And kind of his realization in using this to draw Grog, uh, Kevdak out into the open was pretty neat. Um, uh... It was, uh, I don't want to give too many spoilers, per se, but, uh, bet between some very key usage of spells and abilities, some really good rolls for them, bad rolls at certain key moments for the enemies, and some really great tactics, they managed to... Why was Fireball halved on Kevdak? Because Kevdak is a totem of the bear, um, uh, barbarian, in which case they're... Uh, they actually reduce all damage they take by half except for Psychic, which is nasty for tank barbarians. Um, something that Grog does not have because he's a frenzy berserker. Um, but anyway, hopefully I'm not getting too much slack here for you guys, and I apologize if you are. I'm trying to make that doesn't happen. And I'm trying to not do the up and down this time, the vertical. I always forget to do that. I feel awful after the fact. I'm like, ah, oh, why did I do that? It's easier to hold that way. But anyway. Um... Uh, but there were some really hairy moments last night, like looking back on it too. Um, if Laura hadn't gone in there and done what she did with the broom, Grog would be dead. If she had taken more damage in advance to that or on the attacks that got her, she would have been dead. Pike, also very close to death. And what the, what the party kind of didn't know was if anybody but Grog got the killing blow on Kevdak, uh, he, they, they wouldn't have stopped fighting. The combination of having the one that challenged him deal the final blow, the one they actually knew, uh, was what kind of gave them pause, that moment of, of the shift. Um, if just a random half-elf with daggers, or if, you know, Vex and Shadow with an arrow and killed him, it would have been less of a fall of, you know, a fall of their, their ruler to another power that they understand and kind of acknowledge. And it would have been just an assassination from a nameless, faceless creature. It would have just, 
uh, you know, they, they would have just been like, he killed Kavdak and kept attacking. Um, the fact that Grog managed to do the final blow really kind of put it in a situation where that battle was able to come to a rest, which was crazy. Um, and then the series of social dice. Uh, and I've seen a little bit of discussion online because I always like to kind of see how people's, you know, thoughts or opinions on it, ways that I can, you know, uh, improve based on feedback and stuff like that. Um, there are some frustrations, some individuals voiced with, um, uh, with the fact that the bloodthirsty barbarians didn't just continue to attack and slaughter. Why would they even stop? Uh, when when it was when when the leader was killed, these aren't mindless, bloodthirsty barbarians. Some of their actions may fall into that category at times, but understand there are many, many different facets to a culture beyond just bloodshed. They have people within them they try and protect. There's a tenuous social relationship with the river maw that they've taken in. Um, there's you know, a lot of factors at stake there, and even I tried to insinuate it even then, this this kind of relationship uh, between Vox Machina and the now quelled conflict at the moment is still tenuous. They've lost their leader, and at that moment, there's only two other individuals that have taken any semblance of power, and as opposed to just going into an all-out, we'll attack everyone and everything, they're just kind of feeling it out, it seems. And we'll, I don't want to spoil anything, because I'm sure a lot of this will probably play out in the next episode. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting facets, uh, beyond just them being people that roam and kill stuff. Um, it, it should be interesting as it plays out. So, you know, things happen for reasons. Um, my narrative is, my narrative is far from perfect. I'm, you know, having to write on the fly a lot of the times and doing what I can with what free time I have. So, you know, there's people who are more than willing to go ahead and tear apart you know, elements of it, that's totally viable, but I try and do the best I can to make, have things make sense. And, uh, if anything seems confusing, uh, trust that there's some reason as to why I did it, whether or not you may agree with it, that's totally fine on you. Um, but, uh, anyway, it was a fun episode and, uh, I'm, I'm proud of them. The, the challenge level is still jumping as things go. And I'm curious to see how they deal with next week. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. Did Scanlan get an alignment change? One act will not give you an alignment change, depending on your alignment. However, continued things towards that direction will begin to push in that direction, in that, you know, nudge in that way. Um, we shall see how that aspect will play into his character's personality going forward, which should be interesting. Stats for the items Grog got. I've gotten this question a lot today. Um, uh, I was going to see if Travis wanted to post them himself, but I can probably post them up. I know the, uh, the Tightstone Knuckles... Uh, when attuned, grant a strength of 24, much like a belt of giant strength, um, as well as allowing the user, I think it's once per long rest, or short or long rest, I think it's long rest, to to be under the effect of a spell, of the enlarged spell. But not, it's not a spell, it's not concentration, but it's uh, the effect of an enlarged, which is why Kevdak was able to grow. Uh, and it gives him a siege ability, which means he does double damage. Whoever has him does double damage against objects and structures, much like how an Earth Elemental's physical attacks do. So that is the um, the effect of that vestige. Um, it's pretty fun. So it's kind of like a, kind of like an improved belt of giant strength with a couple other fun things. Um, the the blood axe is is not a, not a vestige, it's not an artifact, it's just a powerful weapon. I think it's like a plus two great axe uh, that deals one, an extra 1d6 necrotic damage against living creatures. And uh, so it does not do the additional damage against undead and creatures that aren't considered living. And uh, other thing is when, when, it, when it brings a creature to zero, it gives the wielder 10 temporary hit points. So I think those are the benefits of the blood axe. So uh, so that should be fun on, uh, on Grog when he gets those on. Are they fighting one of the dragons? We'll see. <laughs> We'll see. Um, I have ideas on how I can handle the whole tribe fighting a dragon. A lot of this is going to depend on the next episode because it's not like they all suddenly dove under the banner of Xanroar or Grog. You know, the the tribe is two different tribal backgrounds that were tenuously under uh, a, a tyrant's rule, essentially. Whether or not some agreed with him or not, they were all there for the point of survival and the advancement of their people. Now that that has been taken... It's it's a very interesting social point in that tribe's 
existence. And uh, I think next episode will definitely bring some of that to light. So, uh, yeah, it should be fun. Uh, let's see if we can take a few more minutes here, questions, and I got to jump on some stuff. But I just wanted to hop on and say hi to folks. Did I see the uh, the Super Fight promo cards? I did. They did not tell me they were doing that. It was a cool surprise. Uh, the fact that they have those made is just a weirder part of my reality that I'm still adjusting to. It's it's very strange. It's very strange. Can't the tribe build an ultra anti dragon thing? They're not builders per se. Um, they don't have a whole lot of time, but we will see. Do I blame Will Wheaton for my loss? No, I don't consider it a loss. It was a fair challenge. Um, there were there were three different moments where they almost lost party members last night. Like not like zero hit points. Like those barbarians wouldn't like take an, a party member to zero and then walk away. They would continue to cut until there were just pieces left. So um, yeah, there were a few kind of hairy moments there. Where I wasn't sure. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was it was quite an intense evening, definitely. Uh, do I enjoy Druids? I think Druids are fantastic. They're vastly improved in this edition over the fourth edition. Remnants. I've always loved Druids. I think they're just, it's a cool, cool character background, cool spell set, and has unique variety to play style, which I like a lot. Uh, do I think the dragon has a chance against 40 plus barbarians? Well, they're not all barbarians, for one. Uh, I say barbarians because it's just an easy term to say, but, you know, they all have different Strengths, some of them are just fighters, some of them are, are there are like a handful of druids, a few other specialties. Um, but uh, we shall see. As, you know, a lot of people versus breath weapon can be a real fast battle sometimes. We'll see what they come up with. I'm letting them all kind of figure it out. Am I in Overwatch? I am. I voice uh, Jesse McCree, actually, the uh, the cowboy character in Overwatch. He's, I'm really excited that game's about to come out. He's a fun one. So those of you who are playing it in the beta now are getting it soon. Get used to hearing the horrible phrase of, it's high noon. Should be fun. <laughs> um, let's see. Bison getting into, Bison getting into voice acting? I mean, there's, there's a great website that I can break down any answers I would have for you called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. It's run by D. Bradley Baker. It has one of the most comprehensive breakdowns of exactly the answers to the question you're asking in a, in a way far better than I could. So check that out. Definitely. Um, how many, let's see. What's going to question you? If you could have two of your favorite bosses fight in the game, who would it be? Oh, two of them fight each other. Oh man. Huh? The Kevdak and Greenbeard combo is actually a very nasty combo if they're not held at the same time. Um, Greenbeard's initial tactic, actually, was either he had a number of heals to back up Kevdak during that entire fight, as well as the ability of his, who's going to cast Sunbeam and then go Earth Elemental form. So he would then be an Earth Elemental shooting beams out of his hands in a very kind of Iron Man way. That was going to be one of his aggressive tactics, um, trying to line up shots. Yeah, there were a lot of things that Scanlan definitely was the MVP of that battle uh, at the very top. If he if if he hadn't utilized the cutting wards to lower the saving throw on uh, Kevdak against the, the whole person, it would have been a whole different ball game. Whole different ball game with both both him and Greenbeard locked down. That that pretty much uh, that pretty much wrecked things on their side from the get go. It was intense. Uh... What did I think of Sam's shirt? It was amazing. <laughs> he held on to that the entire day. Didn't show that to anybody until he unveiled it on the stream, and that was pretty great. Uh, did Scanlan choose to hold Greenbeard at random? Possibly. He just said the, the guy with you know, the green beard, and I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> I know people keep asking about, uh, about why none of the Goliaths are mentioning Grog's beard. Uh, they haven't been in a situation where it's really been a concern for theirs yet. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to occur uh, when they have a, a little less stressful environment to have discussions in. Uh, Osisa plus mate versus Thordak, who wins? I think Thordak would probably have that fight. Probably. It's a, yeah, probably. He's a rough one. Am I surprised that Grog killed Greenbeard? Uh, I wasn't sure which way he was going to go. That was very much the which path to the herd do you choose at this moment. You have two individuals that have some semblance of, of 
status within the remnants of the herd. And it seems that only one of these two you can choose to go with, and both can work towards your goals. It just depends on who you trust their path more and who you think others can rally behind. Xanwar is probably going to be a harder sell to the rest of the tribe than Greenbeard would have been just because he'd been established for so long. But, uh, I mean, like I said, a lot of that's going to play out in the next session, I'm sure. Zalura still in Western. Last they saw via the scry, she seemed to be radically propelling her way uh, via the travel spark. Um, uh, I think it was out, out of the, uh, the library there, the, the Cobalt Reserve. So that's the last they saw of her. We'll see. I'm planning on bringing in a Bloodhunter PC. If the story brings them to cross one of the orders, possibly. I mean, they exist in the world. Uh, they haven't really been in a position where they've uh, encountered any yet. They're still very minimal in presence. Now, Mercy's actually off to a shoot right now, so she she's not here for this one. Um, would Kedak's rage have fallen if they would have waited around to attack him? They would have, actually. If they would have kept him there, his rage would have fallen, and uh, he would have taken full damage after that round. But I guess they also just wanted to try and burn him down as best they could. Uh, they did a lot of damage to him, but that, that rage just with the half reduction kept him going for a long time. How do I remember so much that's happened in previous games? I don't know. I still forget a lot, I'm sure. I have to go back and remind, remind myself occasionally, but, you know, you live in this world the way I have, uh, it kind of, some of the stuff sticks, I guess. I also might have uh, a problem. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm going to do a few, few more of these questions, and i got to run and get some work done, but uh, I thought I'd pop in with you guys for a minute here. Let's see. Uh, should Grog's rage have kept up? Um, not while he was inside the the, the Raven Queen's amulet. Uh, that put him at a uh, round with no attack or, or damage, comparatively, so uh, the rage would have dropped. Any surprises last night's episode? There were many surprises. Many tactical surprises by the party. Uh, many roles and responses that surprised me. Uh, the fact that like they brought Kevdak down so low and they went up the 70 points from the heel and then they brought him down just back to that 70 and I'd already calculated, like looking at him, that he was on that tail end and that happened to be the final blow was Grog. That was a big surprise. and Really swung things in their favor. Like I said, if any other PC had gotten the killing blow on Kevdak, um, the battle wouldn't have paused. They would have seen that as an act of assassination and would have just kept attacking. It was pretty crazy. Um, let's see. Have been doing the RPGs at Momocon? Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't do a lot of ancillary RPGs because it's kind of hard to organize, and to be fair, I, I spend most of my time doing this one anyway. I can't burn myself out. Um, but I'll be doing panels and stuff probably on gaming and Critical Role and things like that, so if you're coming to, to Momocon in Atlanta, I'll have panels regarding that topic, so. Why no door involvement? Look, Taldore. Look, the doors have had their day and we'll have them again. I can't all be doors. Besides, that would be unfair. From TPK them instantly. Uh, oh, cool, you got Loot Crate because it was awesome. Yeah, it was really cool of Loot Crate to, to, to reach out. Um, I, we've, we've had Loot Crate for a long time ourselves and we have a few friends that have worked with them in the past and they're a really, really nice company. And, uh, I mean, thanks to you guys, we're getting to the point now with the show that we can have sponsors, which is cool because that helps us out. It means that we can, for me especially, means that I can spend more time focusing on the show because, you know, it makes a little more on the side for me, which is good. Um, and it means that we can uh, provide a lot of special discounts for our fans and we can, uh, you know, just kind of help build the brand into something that we never expected it would be. We're still kind of still holding on and seeing where this whole thing goes. Uh, I'm blown away that this show is what it is and that you guys are what you are. Huh. So life's weird right now. It's good. It's weird. Uh, what about Mal Matt Colville? I saw someone mention his name in there. Matt Colville is an amazing person. And once again, if you haven't seen his videos uh, on uh, his tips for running games and world building, they're fantastic and very well thought out and thorough. And I, uh, he's... He's an amazing writer and, and a really, really good friend. And because time and such has prevented me from being able to do as many or as in-depth as the uh, GM Tips episodes as I've been wanting to, and I hope to do some more pretty soon, uh, he's been helping fill that gap and do a far better job than I could have. So definitely check those out. 
<laughs> Matt Coville on the show. Uh, there's been talk. Um, we have a long list of people that want to be on the show, and I'm being particular and careful. I want to make sure that they're people that aren't going on just for self-promotion. I want to make sure the people that are genuinely interested or passionate about either learning to play or have played before and want to get on um, and do fall somewhat in the entertainment realm uh, that we do, uh, Coville would be phenomenal. I and mean, he's definitely in consideration on my list, so don't worry. Uh, critical Role stuff in Loot Crate. That largely depends on how well the sponsorship goes. That's part of the discussion. If it does well and, and enough of the audience takes to it and and they find that there's a good overlap uh, in that kind of Venn diagram of, of critters and loot creators, I guess, I'm calling them now, I've coined it, then there has been talk maybe doing like, you know, specific critical role stuff in, down the line. That's what I'm really excited about with this whole sponsorship is, is the opportunities to kind of bring more of this world I made up to physical form. It's the weirdest experience in the world. I can't even, uh, what do I think of the Savage World system? It's great. I like it a lot, uh, especially Deadlands. I'll keep pushing that one because it's one of my favorite RPG systems. Uh, is my dad a bard? Totally. And actually he made a bard, the one game I tried to DM for my parents. He made a bard, named him something Fender because he's my dad, musician. Uh, Pop Funko Mercer. Someone sent me one, a custom one at Christmas, and it's on my desk, and it's amazing. Uh, let's see what other questions here. Uh, I'll give us this one. Any update on the fanzine? We're, uh, yeah, there were, <laughs> the fanzine's interesting. We're, uh, we wanted to plan something. We were working on, on a way that we could bring in the community and actually produce something official uh, through Critical Role uh, that would include the community artists and you know, and hopefully do a, a an occasional recurring thing like that where we bring them together. And partially in the planning, the fanzine announcement happened and we were like, oh, how do we roll all this together? Um, so we love the idea, but we figured it might be cooler if we could go ahead and work with them on a professional level to put something together, uh, make it look really nice and maybe put it on like the shop sale and, and actually, you know, make some money for the artists who put all this time into it as well and, and have it be kind of a, uh, an official, you know, I probably even sh shouldn't even be talking about this, but you know, whatever, NDA and people are like, shh, surprises, but we have ideas, we have thoughts and, and we're hoping to do something really cool with you guys with the wonderful art community that's come out of this. So. Hopefully in the near future we'll be able to talk more about it. Um, you didn't hear anything here. Uh, let's see. I have a little lag here. I'm not getting any messages here. I'll take three more questions and I gotta run. All right. Opinion on psionics. Uh, <laughs> I have a weird history of psionics. Psionics have always been historically broken in a lot of ways in older editions. Uh, I felt a lot of psychic powers, the way they were designed in the older, like second edition days, were very out of genre for me. So I had a hard time enjoying them. They've gotten better over years, and I'm waiting to see what they do in fifth edition releases coming up. Um, it's a cool facet. I would, I haven't quite found an implementation that I'm really happy with yet. So we'll see as things, as things happen. Uh, I will send your regards to Dagon. I'm sure she will appreciate it by going. She's really cute when she's really relaxed and she makes little kisses. She makes kissy sounds. So like we'll wake up and she'll curl on the bed with us and we'll just go. Tch, 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 and then she'll turn us and go. Tch, 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 and we'll just do that back and forth for like five minutes. It's the cutest thing. Birds are awesome. Thoughts on 3D printed minis? Oh man, I would love that. Um, uh, when, when, maybe one day I'll get a 3D printer. And then I'll put them out. I've seen some really cool stuff happen. For me, I'm all about like the idea of three three D printed terrain as well. I think a few critters have sent me some amazing things of that. Oh um, man, I yeah. Based on just kind of toying with and playing and expanding on the Dwarven Forge stuff. Uh, last night was kind of like my grand, <laughs> magnum opus uh, uh, cityscape, and I was really happy how that turned out. I hope it came across well on camera for you guys. It wasn't too confusing, but uh, uh, I think it helped elevate. But uh, yeah, I'm on this like terrain kick right now. I'm like, how can I do this? How can I do this? Um, let's see. Kevdat took half the fire damage. Was it supposed to happen? 
Yes, I answered that earlier, but I'll say it again. Kavadak was not a berserker uh, barbarian. He is a totem of the bear barbarian. And one of their abilities is when they're raging, they have all damage except for psychic. That's actually their benefit. They're more of a tanky barbarian, to clarify for you guys. Tips to encourage players to roleplay a bit more. If you're running the game, just in engage them uh, as an NPC. Look to them in the eyes and talk to them as the NPC would. And if they begin to describe... Um, what they're doing, we ask them, like, well, how do you say it? Go ahead and say it. Talk to me about it, like, as the character. Or and even temporarily implement the rule. Well, whatever you say, you say in character. Uh, if they're really not comfortable with that, then don't push them. You know, you want to make sure people are playing on the level that they're comfortable for. But, you know, if you can nudge them a little bit out of their comfort zone, they may discover that they enjoy it more. Uh, it may take a little more work on your side as the DM to do so, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, any tips to calm an overconfident party? Throw something in their way they can't beat and teach them that sometimes you have to run. You have to run. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there are many ways to do it. And if you look online, there's some cool options for that. I'm going to take one more question and then i got to run and get some work done. Um, let's see. Get through here. Do I use index cards to plan out my campaign? Uh, I don't use index cards. I, I print out, I guess, ex spreadsheets that I make in Microsoft Excel and then cut them into smaller blocks that I then tape to paper. So I use standard size pages, but I, uh, I should remember to take a page behind the screen one of these days. I'm always in such a, such in the zone when I'm set up and I'm getting ready to go to the game because I have a lot of things I have to kind of prepare my brain and load up all the mental programs of what I'm about to run that I forget to. Um, but uh, I'll see if I can do that at some point in the near future. Um... What do I think of 14-year-olds like you playing D&D? That's when I started, so I think it's cool. Um, be aware, you know, some environments, especially in those ages, kids can be cruel. Um, but uh, be prepared to have, you know, be sure of who you are. Have fun. And if you're not having fun with one group, maybe find another one. Uh, would it be okay to send character sheets for you to use an NPC? I get, to put it in perspective, I'd say just in the, in the past Christmas alone, I received about... 35 to 40 different player characters people were sending me to use in the campaign. I'll reiterate a situation of, you know, favoritism. So we're, I'm going to try and implement more possible contests um, in which we can incorporate NPCs as like for the winner and stuff like that. We did that once before and it worked out well. Um, so I'm hoping to do stuff like that in the future. But I can't assure that because it is it is kind of a weird slippery slope. Um, but, uh, but yeah. All right, I know I said one more uh, before, and then I did three more. Sorry. Uh, do I feel physically... This will be the last one. Do I feel physically drained at the end of a session? Yes. <laughs> it's a very mentally and physically taxing experience running that game. Uh, it's intense. So, uh, I usually sleep well the night after. Don't sleep well the night before. Sleep well the night after. And I try not to schedule something too early Friday morning, but inevitably it happens. Like to, like uh, this morning, I had a 9 a.m. session and didn't get to bed until about 3. So I got about four and a half hours of sleep last night total. So that was fun. Anyway, guys, I got to get going. Much love. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to me ramble for a little while. Uh, looking forward to the next session. And uh, is it Thursday yet? <laughs> all right, guys. Take care.